Hi, my name is Peter Clausen from bugsandcyberspace.com. I put my website up in 1997. Can't believe that much time has passed. It's gone very quickly. I also want to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about a new business that I have begun down here in southeastern Arizona, where I moved a couple of years ago to be closer to what I consider to be the best bugging areas in the entire country. And the new business is called Sky Island Adventures. Come down and see all the tarantulas and scorpions and camel spiders and vinegaroons, all the other arachnids out here in the wild setting, up in the mountains, and all of the other wonderful insects too. We take people out for three night, three day adventures, black lighting at night where we set sheets up with special kinds of lights to attract insects and then take a closer look at them. Please enjoy the video and thank you for watching. Those are the Santa Rita Mountains. The reason that I moved from Portland, Oregon to Arizona. This is one of my cattle tanks, but I don't have cattle. Instead, I've got water bugs. And last night it froze over. There's not usually snow on the Santa Ritas. It got quite cold. These whirligig beetles are under the surface of the water. And I've just broken out the ice here a moment ago, and a banded diving beetle has found a place to come and gather some air after a very cold night. There's a crawdad down there. They're not native to any streams here in Arizona. We found one in the stream, decided to bring it back here. Going to be breeding some of these species here in this tank have numerous other aquatic insect tanks. They're really the most interesting of all pet bugs to watch. I used to say that about desert beetles, but have recently come to determine that aquatic insects are far more entertaining. Here's a whirligig beetle that somehow found itself on the surface. I don't know if I'll be able to pick it up or not. There, oh. Pop it over here into this little broken out section and see what happens. I guess that wasn't quite the section there. There we go. Whirly gig beetle. They whirl around in circles in the water. Not on the ice though, not as well anyway. Actually, here's the interesting thing. <laughs> I thought it had risen to the surface, but that wasn't the broken out piece. I'll bet you this beetle is still alive. They are amazing in what they're capable of in terms of surviving through cold temperatures here in the Sky Islands of southeastern Arizona. You can see a bubble under the surface of the water there. Some of these aquatic insects that are down under the surface. They will find these bubbles and use them to breathe. Today I'm sifting through some Dynasties Granti egg bins and I've just discovered that this native species comes from the mountains up there has just begun to hatch. There is the remains of the egg that this one has just hatched out of right next to the larva itself. Very, very pale, very fresh, very new. There's a size reference for you there on my fingertip. And pop this over here into the shade. And I'll show you an example of what a Dynasties Granti egg looks like. There's one right there. Very small, but for an insect, I suppose, very large. It's not a chicken. We'll leave it at that. 
Sneaking in a few landscape shots here of the Sky Island Adventures property. I have just deposited the young larva and the membrane of its egg in there. I think they may feed on those membranes, and so I've left it in there for nutritional value. Got some oak flake soil, special fermented oak wood product that we also offer on the website. Little fungus gnat there. I'm going to get out of here before it sets up camp here in this moist substrate. Lots of tarantula keepers, other pet bug hobbyists are probably familiar with fungus gnats. I also have an example here of a slightly larger larva. This is actually the eastern species, Dynastes tidius. Get a close up on the beetle grub there. A little chilly out here today, so it's not moving too quickly. Bury it there. They'll just stay in the substrate and feed and feed and feed and until they grow large enough, go through three larval instars before pupating and becoming beautiful giant adult rhino beetles. This is Dynastes granti, the largest rhino beetle species in the United States. The two-tone coloration on this particular specimen I featured recently on the At Sky Island Adventures account. Normally they have a grayish or beigey coloration similar to that area around the top horn there called the pronotum or the pronotal horn down in the bottom. The horn on the head is called the cephalic horn. But this one is entirely colored up. This is the final color form of this individual. Highly unusual and a very, very special specimen. All right. <laughs> I swear this just happened. I was running some water over this sheet of ice here. The beetle was right in that groove. You saw it out in the tank, completely frozen into this sheet of ice, which has now thinned a bit. And there's our banded diving beetle, happily swimming around, free of the ice, full of life and exuberance. <laughs> Down here, we have the Sunburst diving beetles, same size and shape, same genus, Thermonectus, in this water tank. Another species that we hope to be breeding. As time goes on, let's pop the light on. Here we go. Better look at these sunburst diving beetles. Here in this tank, I've got some water boatmen. You can see them down there at the bottom. Another interesting thing in this tank, besides the algae feeding water boatmen, is this water scorpion down here. Some of you are familiar with giant water bugs probably. This is also in the order Hemiptera, along with stink bugs and assassin bugs. But these remind people a lot more of stick insects or water mantises, no relation to a scorpion whatsoever. I'm going to remove the algae from it and get it situated so that we can have a better look at this animal. But pretty good sized at about three inches long. Being an air breather, you see that this insect does just fine being out of the water in extreme situations. They're capable of crawling to adjacent pools or, believe it or not, they have wings covering their backs and they fly well enough to move from body of water to body of water as their pools dry up here in the desert. See those raptorial forearms? They're capable of catching their underwater prey in the same way that mantises do. And then just up at the head there, there's a rostrum, a pointy little beak-like apparatus that, like the giant water bugs and like spiders do, they inject their prey with a venom that both breaks down the internal tissues and immobilizes the prey to some degree. The stinger-like 
a lot of people think of it as a stinger. Appendage at the tip of the abdomen, opposite end of the head, it's a breathing tube, and so they will poke this through the surface of the water to breathe. Good look there at the rostrum and eyes of this aquatic predatory insect. Water scorpion, the genus Renatra. The ice has melted. I'd say it's been two to three hours. That Arizona sun. There's a barosis floating there on the surface. It's moving just fine. One little piece of ice there still. And all the other water bugs have moved down below. You see the whirligig beetles down on the side there. Better look at the crawdad. And a little bit more activity now from the back swimmers.